VBHS. Hope y'all had a great Thanksgiving break. Don't forget, the VBHS talent show is virtual this year. Meaning you need to submit your acts on the Google form by January 8th. Miss Hurst sent it out before we left for Thanksgiving. Have any questions? Email Miss Radley. The yearbook is on sale now. Pick it up at S211 or on yearbooksforever.com. The toy drive is still going on until this Friday, December 4th. Help these kiddos have a great Christmas. The chess club is now fully operational. Contact Mr. Couch if you're interested on in being on the team. Hey everybody, it's Brandon Miller back here with some more Pointer Pack News weather. Hope you're having a great Friday out there. Temperatures today are going to be around the 50 degree mark and we're going to have partly cloudy skies. As we look at the weekend weather, Saturday we're going to be seeing mostly cloudy skies with temperatures in the mid 50s. As we look at Sunday's weather, we should be seeing a little bit more sunshine with temperatures remaining in the 50s. Temperatures next week will mostly be in the 50s all week long with plenty of sunshine. Low temperatures will be in the upper 30s and low 40s. As we look at the world weather picture, torrential rain and multiple typhoons have ripped through the Philippines, turning a once picturesque river into a murky brown, setting off multiple deadly landslides. This has been Brandon Miller with some more Pointer Pack News weather. Don't forget about Sam. Signing off. I'm Tanner. And I'm Sam, and this is Pointer Pack News Sports. This past Tuesday, our bowling team did not get to play. This past Monday, our boys basketball team played against Springdale Harbor, losing in the fourth quarter mainly, 63-55. to This Friday, the boys and the girls play versus Farmington. Games start at 6. Be there or be square. Just one day later, the boys and girls come back to Claire Bates Arena to face Cabot, starting at 2. Stay tuned to Twitter to see what the themes for the dog pound will be. I'm Sam. And I'm Tanner. And now on to next week's sports with Brandon and Kyle. Theo Epstein, who built the Chicago Cubs and Boston Red Sox teams that ended long championship droughts for both franchises, stepped down as president of the Cubs. He said he planned to join another team eventually. The Minnesota Timberwolves chose Anthony Edwards as the top overall pick in this year's NBA draft, held virtually. Robinson Cano of the Mets will miss the 2021 baseball season after testing positive for a synthetic steroid. This is his second doping violation. Stay off drugs, kids. And Clay Thompson of the Golden State Warriors, one of the NBA's best shooters, will miss the upcoming season tearing his Achilles tendon in a pickup game. As we look at next week's sports, both the boys and the girls basketball teams will play at Clarksville on Tuesday. Then both teams will play Friday at home against Rogers Heritage. Go dogs. Go pointers. For your international news, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Bahrain's foreign minister visited Israel yesterday for a new U.S. broker agreement. One Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel held their first known meeting last night in Saudi Arabia to crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman of Saudi Arabia. According to Israeli media, it could signal an acceleration of warming relations. Australian troops unlawfully killed 39 civilians and prisoners in Afghanistan over an 11 year period. Australian's military said it's a rare public accounting of abuses in distant war zones. A prominent Iranian nuclear scientist was assassinated. The country's leaders have made it clear they intend to retaliate. Remember that first round of stimulus money that came out around earlier this year? Well, after COVID stuck around, the government has been trying to plan for another stimulus to help but nothing has happened yet. The current proposal is $500 billion from the GOP and $2.2 trillion from the Democrats, not even close to the same amount. So the entire process has been stalemate. While we're talking about money things, Janet Yellen is expected to be president-elect Joe Biden's nomination for the next Treasury Secretary. If picked, Yellen will be the first woman to lead the Treasury Department. Why does it matter? Think of this role as the CFO of the United States. Yellen will advise the president on broad economic issues, from public debt to international sanctions, like managing the U.S. economic relationship with China. Biden has also announced the possible nomination for Alejandro Mayorkas to lead the Department of Homeland Security. He has named Arville Haynes, a politically moderate national security professional, to be his director for the national intelligence, and Anthony Blinken to be the choice for Secretary of State. Biden has named an all-women senior comms team including Jen Paskey as White House Press Secretary. In comparison to President Trump's policies like climate change and health care, Biden will be trying to reverse Trump's policies on China. However, Biden instead seems set to accept Trump's basic diagnosis but strive for a more effective treatment in our ties and foreign affairs. More on Biden nominations. President-elect Joe Biden is planning a climate administration. His aides are drafting orders to reduce pollution and seek nominees who will embed climate policy across the government. 
Biden hopes he create millions of construction, skilled trade, and engineering jobs to build a new American infrastructure and clean energy economy. Under this plan, Biden promises to ensure the U.S. achieves a 100% clean energy economy and reaches net zero emissions no later than 2050. Amazon, the place where you can buy everything from a trampoline to a turtle cage to your prescription medicines. In 2018, Amazon bought the online pharmacy pill pack, but now it's a bigger initiative. Prime members can even get free two-day shipping and up to 80% discounts on generics. The big picture? It's a great option for these social distancing times, but it's a little daunting to think of the possible abuse of this access. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg and Twitter Chief Jack Dorsey are making frequent virtual appearances with the Senate Judiciary Committee. Why are they in the hot seat? Lawmakers are most concerned with the platform's content moderation policies, employing these guys to intervene less in user activity. We've talked about this before, but there's also the grand issue spread of misinformation, antitrust, and at the root of it all, if social media can be addictive. Conan O'Brien is ending his daily late night talk show on TBS and moving on to a weekly variety show on HBO Max. Would this even be news if we weren't going to talk about COVID? A new study found that immunity from the coronavirus could last up to several years. Here's the kicker though. This information was published online. It has not been peer reviewed and it was not published in a scientific journal. A few places like the University of Washington have stated that there are memory cells that were produced following infection that lasted up to three months in the body. Still be careful about everything you read on the internet. Most of it's not true. Here's a quick roundup of regulations. New York City closed in-person learning. Ohio announced a three-week curfew from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. New Mexico is sheltering in place for two weeks. California reimposed restrictions on 94% of its population. Washington, Michigan, and other states are halting indoor dining. So has the city of Philadelphia. Iowa has done 180 mass mandates, facing high numbers in cases and deaths. Governor Kim Reynolds issued that all people above the age of two were required to wear face coverings. New Orleans said it would not host parades for Mardi Gras for the first time in 42 years. South Australia had issued an emergency six-day lockdown because of a pizza delivery guy. Turns out this pizza delivery guy lied about close contact tracing, and then they lifted the ban. Dolly Parton, the queen and living legend, is being credited as pandemic savior for her $1 million donation this spring to Vanderbilt University, the place that worked with drug maker Moderna to develop a vaccine. Thanks, Dolly. Pfizer and Moderna have been running mates on who will create the best vaccine. In the last episode, we discussed how success rates have been projected. As of two weeks ago, Pfizer said their shots were now 95% effective with no serious side effects. Both companies are promising results, estimating they will have enough doses to vaccinate 22.5 million Americans by January. Pfizer says maybe even middle of December. In other news, the Federal Aviation Administration cleared Boeing 737 MAX to fly again. The plane had been grounded for 20 months after two fatal crashes killing 347 people in total. It's the longest grounding of a jet in U.S. history, and the cost has been around $20 billion, and Dennis Mullenberg was replaced. Also, the first flight is scheduled on American Airlines route from Miami to NYC on December 29th. Based on the Twitter poll from the Morning Brew, 54% of respondents say they wouldn't fly on this plane. U.S. retailer Guitar Center has declared bankruptcy as music lovers move their shopping online. Guitar Center began in 1959 as a store selling home organs in Hollywood. More on music. Ever heard of a genre called hyperpop? Spotify certified hyperpop as a buddy musical genre by creating a playlist by the same name. Hyperpop is a parody of pop the playlist main editor Lizzie Zabo told Vice. It almost pokes fun and pushes the bounds of that kind of quirky traditional radio pop star sound. Here's a quick sound bite. Goodbye.
Go to the top. Do your job right. Like up, down, right. So you got the script or what? You got I'm Alex. <laughs> and this is. Bam! Miss. Honey. 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 Bam! Shot is pretty. <laughs> Play you too soon. Yeah. Go back up, go back up. You guys are just throwing stuff at me while I'm trying to record. I am cursed! I have. Your eyes are just. Shh. I have it. Get it out of here! Okay.